What is cracking, boys? And my ladies, it is Run Creates. And today, how to beat Millennia, the Blade of Aquilia. Aquilia? With no BS. Easiest way possible I could find. Before we even get into this boss fight, we're prepping up. We are making sure that you make her taste defeat. She will taste defeat at the end of this. She will have her first L. If the, I don't know if this is the right way. First L in a long time. I'm done talking, let's get straight to business. First things first! You're going to need Mimic Me, or the Mimic Tier. I call Mimic Me because, you know, awesome powers, many me, but th that's besides the point. You need to get him the plus 10. I have, thankfully for you, I have a video on how to do that. I'll be up on the screen right now, so that's pretty cool. You can go there, check that video out. By this time in the game, you should have the areas unlocked to get all the components needed. With the Glove War Seal to upgrade Mimic Me to plus 10, you're gonna need to do that. Did it? Got it? Good. Next, we need to get our Vigor pumped up to at least 60. And if you're using Red Against Source Seal, you need to only pump it up to 55, which is great. So we can do this. I have a video on it, but we'll go over it here anyways. You can go over to Renala in her Great Academy, um, whatever the heck it's called. And you're going to go there and you're going to offer her a Larva tier. Thankfully, in the same Necrom, which is a, pla which is a place you're going to have to go to anyways to upgrade your Mimic tier, you could come here and you can actually kill the giant rolling ball things that try to crush you over right next to the one um, side of Grace to the right inside that little cathedral area. You can go there and kill that thing to actually obtain one so that you can go and rebirth. And you get 10 rebirths or respect per playthrough, but I hope this one you'll only need once for. You've pumped up your Vigor to 55 or 60. Now what you want to do is pump up your Dex a bit, I'd say at least up 48 to 50, and then get minimum strength and arcane requirement of 20. If you guys have not checked out my overpowered broken arcane bleed build already where i show you guys how to get the raging wolf set from the start of the game check that video out it will definitely help you heck you might even get more of an edge and then you can come here and easy respect with the arcane dexterity the reason why we want to pump up dex more than arcane even though the arcane scaling for the weapon we're using is better is because dexterity brings up a lot of our offense stats arcane only brings up discovery so it's not going to be helpful to us if we have it any higher than the minimum stat requirements now what we're going to do is make your way over to this place where you go to fight the fire giant if you need a guide on fire giant got that too probably be up here in the um upper right hand corner but you're going to go towards the church of repast which is a bit further down from the side of grace to the boss and you're going to go there and you're going to kill okina okina is tough but i but i was able to cheese him with reduvia and there you will kill him and obtain not only his mask but also the rivers of blood an incredible katana of the hypus the katana hypu here has never been higher might i tell you the rivers of blood isn't just an epic looking blade but it's l2 is going to shrek her and the minimum requirements of 12 strength 18 dex and 20 arcane pump up your dexterity because you know dex is going to get you the furthest with the scaling since strength is by far the weakest here and arcane won't do us any good going above it is going to make her destroy you don't know why it's about so good watch this video up on the screen right now but let me tell you right now go in with that blade and just start destroying her. I actually have on the talisman that lowers our FP cost for skills. And that one I bought from EG. If you do a side quest. Or I think you could buy from him right away once you find him. But that is a really great talisman to have for this fight. But not yet, believe it or not. Because we still got to go over the boss fight itself. So, let's get into that right now. First things first, right when you get into the arena. Make sure that you use your Mimic Me. I know here I'm using dual blades, which I shouldn't have, but my friend decided to be gracious enough to drop them for me, so I decided why not and make the fight go quicker. But trust me, one will do you good as well. But like I said before, put Mimic Me in first and wait until he attacks. You must wait until he attacks first. Because the one key to Millennia is that every time you're done doing your attack, you want Mimic Me to attack last so that she goes after him. Especially if she does her dreaded waterfowl flurry you're gonna be done for but anyways the one thing that makes millennia so difficult is the fact that not only how fast her attacks are in the range but also the fact that she heals every single punishment she gets on you and your summon so thankfully if you have 100 percent physical protection shield that won't be a problem but we're not turtling here what you're gonna want to do is go in and you're gonna want to stagger her you do not want to be in front of her like I am here. I'm just being a Katana Hypu man. I always have been. It's just in my genes and in my blood. But we're basically going to just... Let's get the elephant out of the room right now. Waterfowl Flurry. Waterfowl Flurry is the giant four tornado strike one that pretty much instantly kills you. The only two defenses to it is to either run the heck away 
or to have up a shield and dodge all of it and good luck or have up a shield and protect yourself from all of it it's not gonna really happen you gotta run and the only way to know what's happening is when she floats up in the air looking like she's gonna strike and she starts going at it the first two you can run away from the second one you can pause just a bit and unlock and then press the roll button away and directly after that you can roll into her fourth one and then roll either to the right or left twice depending on which way she decides to go another thing she'll do is when she dodges she'll do like this little ballerina type of like dodge it kind of reminds me of somebody from persona 5 though but She'll do this type of ballerina type dodge to go back. Wait, she'll always do it twice by what I've seen, but if you decide but if you decide to spam your weapon art, you might be wasting them. Unless like you both are like doing it like in a flam spontaneously, ba bam, ba bam. But what you're going to keep doing is circling. Wait for Minimi to attack. Once Minimi attacks, go in. The key to this battle is to stagger her. Put her in an infinite stagger loop. But before I even get into that, make sure you're staying behind her. Here, I'm just like the cocky anime hero. I'm literally going in head first nuts to butts. It wasn't a great idea, but you want to stay behind her. Another thing to mention about the flurry attack that I forgot is that it does have this AoE at the end where she'll wait and an explosion with the strikes will happen. Just stay away from it. That's all I can tell you. Mini Me is tough. The real goal for Mimic Me is to keep him above half health and not have to use his heal before phase two because he's going to need health for phase two he's a mega hunky monkey tank machine here he can tank a ton of hits and because of that reason with us having 60 vigor he's going to be doing pretty good and since he's helping us proc bleed which is basically her weakness and our katana is hypu is just slashing at range doing crazy damage you're going to be able to stagger her and proctor bleed a lot faster now with that being said, if you get her down with enough damage, she will get knocked down. That is an opportunity to get in either a repost or a backstab depending on what your jazz is. One thing you need to watch out for is every time her blade has this like red spark appears, that means she's going to do a lethal attack. Thrust, it could be a few slashes to an overhand swing, it could also be a deadly thrust, or it could just be a little jump swing that she'll go around. If you ever get unlucky to the point where you have to get in the situation where she's coming after you with those attacks, roll into her. Don't roll away like I am, but since we're Katana Hypu, we kind of can do that since we could take her at range. Basically, let her keep on mini-me, stay to her back, and just give her the works with your weapon heart. And your flasks should be level 11, and you should have all 12 flasks. If you don't, guess what? Great news for you. I got a video on it. So my Elden Ring playlist will be down in the description below. You can find all the information you need there, all the good beans. But practice is going to work you wonders. Because when you get into phase 2, she will instantly start with this jump drop attack. When she does this, run, run, yamero. Just get out of there. Run, and then as soon as you see her coming at you, start spam rolling. If you get hit by this down thrustward attack when she's flying from the sky after her beautiful transformation, you're going to get probably one-shotted as soon as that explosion happens with the Naruto looking crap with the flower. If that happens, and you successfully get away, just spam roll away, so that you avoid the AoE. Because if you're right in her with the AoE, you're dead. Basically, that, that's what happens, you just die instantly. I get luckier, and I'm able to dodge all of it, and then this giant flower will just start opening up. That's actually going to cause Scarlet Rot if you walk into it. That's why I'm saying Mimic Me needs to have a ton of health in Phase 2, because he's because Scarlet Rot, I don't know if he can get procted by it, but he's still going to take damage nonetheless because it is still doing actual damage to you on top of Scarlet Rot, which sucks. But you're going to go in, and you're going to let Mimic Me do most of the work. And then once she gets up, here's where it gets interesting. It's just like Phase 1, except a lot of her attacks are going to be a lot more powerful, are going to be a bit more different with timing not much but a bit more and she's also going to have this aoe at the end of pretty much all of her attacks so she actually does this crazy um down smash on mimic me with butterfly geyser that is the perfect time to punish her and get in some hits that should be just enough time if you use the full weapon art ability for mimic me to get up and strike her again so she will go after him again remember you want her to go after him she should never be comboing into you if she is you're likely gonna die but I'm kind of just here like saying, Mimic me, please go into me. But she doesn't. She goes after me, and I'm over here running. I almost die. But thankfully, the logic comes in at the last second. I remember to roll, and then roll to the other side to get my health back. But that would have been horrible if I would have gotten caught in that. But she's still jumping around. We're still just pushing her aside. We're aura rushing her. And she goes by Mini-Me. Mimic-Me is smart enough to roll once away, so we'll give him the kudos for that. But he's still going in there and doing the work. 
then we're gonna go back in and just keep spamming her now keep in mind she still does have that swipe and then jump kick swipe attack but i actually recommend dodging away from her not dodging into her in this battle unless it's her flurry attack which is the only time you should ever be doing it it's the only time phase two she should also be staggered again for a sneaky stab in the rear or a riposte in the front if you get that take advantage of that to proctor bleed unless you really think it might kill her from your visceral but other than that you got to keep away from that, please. Most of this is going to come down to timing, spacing, and watching your stamina to make sure you can run away. Another thing is unresponsive B presses, or if you're playing on PlayStation, circle presses. Um, double tap your circle. Double tap circle and press down on your analog stick to run away when she goes up. That is what I can tell you to counter the unresponsive B presses or circle presses. But keep in mind, you want to keep her close to mimic me at all times. Mimic me must be hitting her or else you aren't going to do too good. And the combos we can do, she's easy to stagger. Like I mentioned, you can still stagger her in phase two. I've seen people knock her down with the blade of um, her knight in flame. And that's pretty cool too. You can definitely do that in phase two. But overall, you're just going to stick to mimic me being your health sponge and just tanking all the hits for you. And you getting in, whack whacking your attacks, praying to goodness, and making sure that Mimic B will go in, hit her so she aggros him and not you. Sometimes she might aggro you, but that's why I'm telling you how to dodge all these attacks for. That, the attack where she does her little kick swing and then jumps up and thrusts her sword in the ground and brings up that geyser, that is the best attack to counter right there. That is the attack, that's the opening you're looking for. And just keep whacking at her with your katana hypu and staggering her with Mimic Me and procting her bleed. Other than that, just pray to goodness she stays on Mimic Me. Make sure you're close to Mimic Me. Mimic Me is your lifeline to spell besides your Katana Hypu. You need to make sure you have him. But with that, you will take down Melania, the goddess of rot. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope this helps you out. This is a tough battle. It is. It really, really is. If you don't stick to your footing and ground, you are going to get crushed. And I've spent at least eight hours until I got in touch with some of my friends that were able to help me out and give me some tips and pointers. But honest to goodness, guys, get on your horse. You can do this. I think the one thing that throws everybody off is her waterfowl flurry attack and her RNG. Other than that, thank God she is a freaking optional boss. If she was not an optional boss, I would I'd just be like, she needs. I think she needs rescaling or she needs to be a lot weaker personally. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If this video was helpful, I am excited for you. I really hope you beat her. Let me know if you let Millennia taste defeat in the comment sections below. I can't wait to see how many of you guys get helped up from this video. You guys know me. I'm Ren. I don't do BS here. And Millennia, you finally can taste defeat with the power of Katana Hypu and Mimic Me. In film, she will taste defeat. Never gonna give you up and never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you.